Genuinely, universal control on the iPad has been blowing my mind recently. So much so that it's actually changed how I view my entire desk setup, how I'm approaching my productivity, and I knew the second it started seeping into my everyday workflow that I had to make a video about it. So here we are, and here's that video. So subscribe if you like iPad and aesthetic tech content, and let's get right into it. Oh, and in this video, I'm not suggesting for a second you should go and buy an iPad just to have this functionality because that's possibly a little too much. But if you do have an iPad, then it's totally worth checking out. My current desk setup has changed quite a lot since last time I updated you all and I am going to be making a video on it soon. But for a quick recap, I'm still using this desk which is built from parts from Ikea. The desk shelf is from Grovemade which has been awesome. I'm running the M1 Max Mac Studio as my main machine and it's all hooked up to the Stell U2720Q monitor which for me has been a really fantastic monitor for my needs. It's got loads of I.O. including USB-C with power delivery which is perfect. Sitting on the desk shelf next to the monitor is the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro from 2021 and that's attached to this wonderful stand from Charge M Pro which is called the Magflow. But lots more on my desk in another video. If you're worried about setting up universal control on the iPad though, all I can say is don't be. It's possibly one of the easiest things to get working in Apple's ecosystem. It should be as simple as having both your iPad and Mac updated to the latest firmware, be on the same Wi-Fi, and they both need to be signed into the same iCloud account. Then it's pretty much as simple as placing your iPad on either side of your Mac screen and dragging your pointer over to the iPad and bam, that should be it. It'll even detect which side the iPad is on, which is awesome. If you're struggling though, head over to system preferences on your Mac, then go to display, then hit the universal control button and make sure they're all selected as on. And if worst comes to worst, turn your iPad on and off again. That solved it for me quite a few times. The secret source for this setup though is the Magflow iPad stand and it's something I didn't realise I needed until I started using it. And now that Universal Control is out and I'm mainly running everything off the Mac Studio, it's become an integral part of my desk setup. The stand is really awesome. Not only does it look good and it's made really well, it's magnetic so connecting the iPad to it is super easy. It also rotates so you can either go portrait or landscape depending on how you want to use it and it fits right in as well. They've definitely ran with the Apple design aesthetic here which I really appreciate so it slots right into my Mac base setup nicely. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check out the stand. As for actually using Universal Control, I've actually been using it in a bunch of ways and if you saw my last video you might have a good idea of how this looks. But one of the main things I've been using it for is a webcam for all manner of online meetings. Unless I break out my MacBook Pro or hook up my Sony camera, which honestly is such a pain, I don't actually have a way of using my Mac Studio for web calls. But with the iPad sitting here on this stand, that's now completely changed. I can use universal control to simply answer any calls I have on that day. Using the camera like this is always something I felt like was missing from Sidecar. You could never use the cameras while your Mac was hooked up to it. But while the iPad is still acting solo as an iPad, you can. Also having the iPad on this stand means that the webcam has a much better angle on your face. Usually when you take a call on an iPad, the camera gives you a really awkward look thanks to its position on the side, but that's really alleviated through the Magflow. Another thing I've been loving is being able to drag and drop files from the iPad to the Mac and vice versa. Generally speaking, this isn't something I've ever been too fussed about, but since I've started working on Instagram Reels and TikTok content, I'm often airdropping loads of video content to my other devices, especially my iPad. And with Universal Control, I can simply drag that over to the Files or Photos app on the iPad and then edit it directly from there. However, this isn't perfect by any means. You can't simply drag a file or photo over to the iPad unless you have the right app open for it to drop into. However, from the iPad to the Mac, it seems to work really well. On a really simple and basic level too, it's just nice having a separate space for other apps. I'll often just have my email sitting here open or my Notion so I can cross-reference things or even just my to-do list sitting there ready to go. You also get better access to apps that are designed for a mobile platform. TikTok and Instagram are good examples even though the Instagram app still looks like a mess on iPad, it does have full functionality and uh, TikTok is pretty much perfect on here. 
And finally, it's obviously still an iPad, so you can just grab this off the stand and use it like normal. I'll often do just that if I want to make use of the Apple Pencil for taking some notes or drawing something in Procreate, or if I'm just leaving my desk and want to take the iPad with me. Before we talk about any glaring issues though with this setup, because trust me there are some, I wanted to take a moment to speak about the sponsor of this video, Notion. Notion is an organizational app that allows you to customize it to your needs so you can stay on top of everything you're working on. I've been a keen user of Notion now for about eight months and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface on what it can do. My main use case for Notion though is to completely manage everything here on YouTube. I keep everything in here, all of my video ideas, my scripts, checklists for freelance work, keeping track of my goals and even equipment I'm planning on getting. Also, I very recently set up a collaborative Notion page for my brand Kuroku. Rachel and I have been using it to keep track of product ideas, thoughts on how to tackle social media as a brand, and mainly the gallery pages so we can image dump everything we find cool and interesting. I am mainly a solo user of Notion, but it works incredibly well if you are working as a team, allowing you to assign people to roles and tasks, share calendars, and collaborate directly on anything and everything you've got going on. So that's Notion. It's a really great app that's increasingly working its way into my workflow and general life. And if it's something you want to check out, then there's a link in the description. And of course, a big thanks goes out to the folks over at Notion for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned, this is in beta right now, so it's not quite perfect, and there are some really strange little issues I've been running into while I've been using it. These don't always happen, but sometimes my Logitech MX Master mouse will glitch while it's over on the iPad screen, and you also can't scroll with the scroll wheel unless your mouse is connected via Bluetooth. Secondly, my keyboard doesn't always seem to register when I'm holding down shift, so I'm missing punctuation here and there too. Another thing is, if you're using an app on the iPad with loads of controls on the side that's closest to the Mac screen, it's really easy to accidentally bump between the two, and it can sometimes like make your workflow feel really strange and very occasionally it just doesn't want to work out right but usually a quick reset of the iPad does sort that out. So yeah there's still some bugs and teething pains in here for sure but generally speaking it does work well and from what I have seen it does work best with Apple accessories. Shock. So the magic keyboard and mouse or trackpad combo is going to give you the best results right now which isn't really that surprising. So as it stands, universal control is really promising and I'm really liking the way it's going. And I do prefer it over sidecar because I very rarely need more screen real estate. I'm very used to working on one screen and having like a more smart monitor on the side just seems to be that bit more useful for me right now. If there are some areas though where I wish it would improve, I was actually watching a Christopher Lawley video on his channel the other day and he mentioned something really interesting which I wanted to touch on here. This was the idea of like a shelf you can use within Apple's ecosystem where you can store things very quickly and then transfer them between Apple devices like a cloud powered version of copy and paste but it can work with much bigger files and store more than just one thing. Having a feature like that would mean you could easily save stuff on your iPad and then pick it back up later on your iPhone or your Mac or whatever device you are working on. I think that could be a really interesting way of having all the devices work just that bit more in touch with each other. I also wish there was a quick toggle to get the iPad into sidecar mode if you're already using it in universal control. Right now you have to go through the normal way of setting it up in display settings on macOS, which is fine, but a quick little toggle switch might be a really nice addition. For now that just about rounds up how I've been using the iPad and universal control within my desk setup and in my general workflow. As always though, I'd love to know if you're using it and what you're finding it most useful for. Drop a like on the way out if you enjoyed the video too, that would be massive and I will see you all in the next one.